room. And one person would talk and the ear would go there. Somebody else made a motion and the ear went over there. I want to get you looking at these things. Another very basic principle animal handling is a calm animal is easier to handle. I cannot emphasize that enough. This applies to every animal, poultry, everything. If the animal gets all fearful and excited, it takes 20 minutes to calm back down. Now when an animal gets excited or agitated, that is fear. You know, you're working with an animal, trying to <laughs> veterinary or something like that on it, and it starts to get upset. That is usually due to fear. And some people might say, well, that's being anthropomorphic. Well, the neuroscience literature is very, very clear that animals feel fear. And they also can feel uh, separation distress. You know, you take the mother away from the baby, and the mother and the baby are all upset. That's separation distress. That's a separate emotional circuit from fear. They're both really negative emotions. And this is something that's been validated in neuroscience literature. But let's try to not let an animal get upset. Now, what are signs that animals such as cattle, horses, are calm? They'll have a nice, soft brown eye. You start to see the whites of the eye. Your animal's getting upset. Now, there's some breeds of horses, some of the paints, and some of the Holstein cattle where even at rest, they'll show a little bit of eye white. But in other breeds of animals, you'll just have to see the brown eye. But you start to see more eye white, it's getting upset. When cattle are calm, they chew the cud. Okay, they put their ears forward. Head will be down. Because when there's a predator around, the animal's looking all around. Animals have very good memory for bad things that happen to them. There's been a brand new study just done up in, out west on uh, beef cattle and their ability to remember wolves. Beef cattle that have had wolves attack them are compared to beef cattle that have not had wolves attack them. And if beef cattle have been attacked by wolves, they'll be afraid of everything canine. All dogs now become bad. If you play wolf howls to them, that will get their stress hormones going off the charts. Animals remember bad things. It's very, very important. You bring a new animal home, I don't care what your animal is, make, for it, make sure its first experiences with you are good. Feed it, do something like that. Don't do veterinary stuff on it, it's the first thing you do. You want its first experiences to be good. Now there's an example of a horse nice and calm, ears are forward. Okay, now what are signs of fear and anxiety? In animals, the graze, horses, cattle, tail swishing and they get more agitated. Cat too. Dog, the butt's wiggling, it's happy. But in cattle and horses, if the tail swishing, there's no flies on there, and it'll swish faster and faster and faster and faster, and then all the time, suddenly it blows up. You see, that's your warning that he's starting to get upset. They're looking around. Horses will start to sweat. All animals, when they tend to get upset, will start defecating and pooping. In fact, there's actually a behavior test, it's called a defecation test. You measure how many droppings they let out. Lights of the eyes will show. Are these cattle calm? Well, the one in the back, that tends to be the flighty one. So you have a group of animals, they're genetic differences. And the more flighty animal will tend to stay to the back. What I want to do is to get you a lot more observant of details. What's your animal looking at? What's it hearing? What is it smelling? An animal's world is sensory-based, not word-based. A world of visual, visual detail, auditory detail. And then think about the smell detail that a dog has. You know, you'll read about these fancy wines and they'll say, well, it has blueberry notes with a nice oak finish. I don't happen to smell that in the wine. But there's wine stewards that can identify 4,000 different wines. You see, that's an example of smell detail. Now multiply that by about a hundred and you have the dog living in this smell detail world. Okay, there's a beef animal there switching its tail right before it started jumping around and all excited. Now this bison is not happy. The whites of the eyes showing and don't use nose tongs. You use ways to hold animals that hurt. They're gonna be harder to handle the next time around. You know, it'll be a really good idea to get your animals accustomed to going through the veterinary facility. You know, make that a good first experience. Also, if we have to do something that's kind of painful, don't do it where you milk them. 
No, 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 no. Maybe you do it out behind the barn somewhere, so that where you have to do something unpleasant, it's not where they live or where you milk them. Now, there's a horse that's definitely not being happy there, very upset. Here's another horse here with the ears pinned back. I want to get you looking at visual detail. Now, look at that right there. The horse and the zebra have an ear on each other, and the other ear's on me. Now, I just watched the mule out there, and he was doing exactly the same thing. Really big, long ears, and he was pointing them around at all different places. You understand these behavior indicators. It, the animal will warn you before it does something like lashing out and kicking. Now, I was just recently um, at an event with a lot of 4-H and FFA students there, and they were asking me, what's the best way to train their pig? And I said, not the day before the fair. <laughs> I, I just can't emphasize enough. You want to start training your animal, if you're going to be showing it, I don't care what animal it is, the instant you get it. Saw a very nice demonstration over there how to hold the baby ducklings and chickens and to support them and not make it scary. That's really important. We need to try to prevent situations that frighten animals. All right, let's be aware of things in the environment. See how this pig's stopping at the metal strip? Now, if that metal strip was something he walked over every day, you wouldn't pay attention to it. But if it's the first time he sees that metal strip, he's going to stop and put the head down. Also, watch for time of day effects. Things like shadows. Bright sunny day, you got shadows. Cloudy day, you don't have shadows. The direction of the light. You know, animals tend to go towards the light, but they will not go into blinding light, you know, like looking into the rising or the setting sun. And you can use light at nighttime to attract animals into things like trailers because they'll tend to move towards the light but they don't go into blinding light. Now I've been talking for a long time about things like chains hanging down in chutes. Why do I have to keep talking about these things? Because people are not removing them. <laughs> I'm going, why after 40 years doing these talks I still have to talk about this? People aren't seeing it. Well, in my Humane Handling book, which I will be signing afterwards up in the bookstore, uh, I have a whole checklist of things to look for. And it's been very interesting for me to learn how people think differently. I think completely in pictures. So it was obvious to me to look at what cattle or pigs or horses were looking at. But for other people that are more verbal, this wasn't so obvious. You see, when I was young, when I was in my 20s, I thought everybody thought the same way. Well, I found out that some people are more visual than other people. Some people are more mathematical than other people. There's different kinds of thinking. In fact, I've got a new book, The Autistic Brain, where I discuss visual thinking and mathematical thinking and actually present scientific research on that. This won't be for sale today, but Amazon does have it. Okay. Uh, a question I get asked all the time, since I work with slaughter plants, is do cattle and other animals know they're going to get slaughtered? I had to answer this question very early in my career. So I'd go over to the big swift plant we had in Arizona. Then I'd go out to the feed yards and I'd watch cattle going up the veterinary chute. And I found that they behaved the same way. They knew they were going to get slaughtered. They should be a whole lot wilder at the slaughter plant. And that wasn't what's happening. Turns out they don't like the dark. Now you'll notice there in that tunnel there's some white translucent panels. That actually helps get them in there. Because they don't like going into the dark movie theater effect. That can really be a problem. Now, we do have a chain hanging down there. Most of the time, the students notice that. And then I say, well, I looked at that picture. Maybe there's something else there I need to do something about. And I find about half the students fail to see the three people standing where they should not be standing. These are not totally tame cattle. They've never been here before. And you ask them to walk into three people. And one of them's got on mirrored aviator sunglasses. So you got super big eyes. You see, eyes are a threat. Uh, just the other day I was at a meeting and a guy had, I thought this was ridiculous, he had a camouflage uh, sweatshirt with giant lion eyes on it. I said, that's not going to work very well. The deer out there are going to see those big eyes. And it's not going to work very well as a camouflage shirt. I mean, if, if that's like the dumbest thing you could have. Whoever, whoever 
made that sweatshirt, didn't know anything about animal behavior, with two lion eyes, and each eye was about that big. Now, just saw that just two days ago. Okay, if, no, if you have a tame dairy cow, that animal has no flight zone at all. You can pet it, or a tame horse, or a tame mule, or a tame goat. That has no flight zone. But you have animals that are just out in the pasture and you don't do anything with them, then they're going to have some flight zone. And then when you're standing close to them, they're going to be jumping all around because they don't like it because you're standing inside their flight zone. Well, right here, I just put a piece of cardboard on the back half of the squeeze chute, and the cattle would come in, come in more easily. You know, people need to spend time with their animals. We're having some problems on, on the East Coast. People want to go raise some grass-fed cattle, and they're letting them go feral. They're just putting them out there and not doing anything with them, and then they somehow get them rounded up, and they come into the local locker plant and go berserk because nobody has worked with them at all. And this brings up another important thing. Let's say you only handled your cattle on a horse or you only came out in a truck. See, a person on a horse and a person on a tr in a truck is a different picture than a person on the ground. So it's really important to get your animals, regardless of what they are, used to people on foot walking through them. This is really super important. So if they go into town to the meat plant or to an um, uh, auction market or something like that, they're not bouncing off the walls going berserk because they're seeing their first person on foot. Now this shows an ideal lighting situation for a veterinary shoot where they see a lighted place to put their head. And they're gonna go in there a whole lot more easily. I can't emphasize enough the importance of non-slip flooring. Animals panic when they start to slip. This is a really nice non-slip floor made out of recycled uh, tire treads, woven tire treads. Now I'm going to put this, I've got this picture up here, and there's something else here in this picture. And I want to see if somebody notices it. Someone tell me some other things about this picture. Yeah, look at the beat sunbeam. And look at how that animal is locked onto that sunbeam like radar. You see, most people don't notice that. You see, if it's cloudy, you won't have a sunbeam there. That might be just a specific time of day effect. The fear of falling is a primal fear. And so when you're handling and holding an animal, there was a very nice demonstration this morning on holding a chick and a duckling and a baby turkey. Uh, you support your animal. So you don't trigger the fear of falling. You know, you let the legs dangle out there, your animal is going to get really fearful. The fear of falling is a primal fear. So it's really important for your larger animals to have a non-slip floor, that when you take your dog into the veterinarian, that he has a non-slip mat to stand on. You go on the internet and you type in, uh, you know, dog at the veterinary clinic, you get all these cute puppies and they're all braced like this. No wonder the dog is terrified. You know, that's one of the most basic things in handling an animal. You know, if it's a small animal and you pick it up, make sure it's supported so it doesn't feel like it's going to fall. Okay, here are some reflections to scare an animal. Again, you're going to get time of day effects. You know, one time of day you have the reflection, another time of day it's not there. Now, rapid movement is very stimulating to the nervous system. But it has different effects on different kinds of animals. Rapid movement makes the predator chase, and it makes horses, cattle, and all your grazing animals run away. So it sort of has the opposite effects on the two different kinds of animals. And I had a chance to um, go out in the movie set. This is really cool when they made the HBO movie, and then this wonderful camera. They call it a giraffe with a hothead with fluid motion control wheels. <laughs> and this thing just moved like this, really smooth like this. And you could take this and put it right down over a bunch of cattle, move it all around their heads, and the animals didn't react to it. It moved, you know, it moved just about like this, with such a smooth motion that the animals didn't view it as a threat. You know, the thing that kind of amazes me is when it, how well using animal behavior can really work. Another principle is don't be yelling and screaming at livestock. Animals know when people are yelling and screaming, it's being done at them. And that will make the heart rate go up more than just the sound of gates slamming. Because the cattle and the horse or the mule, whatever it is, the goat, the pig, whatever it is, 
it knows that's yelling is direct